Thank you for joining us. You're listening to the Beyond 50 radio program. I'm Daniel Davis. Joining us here on the program today is a guest we've had on our program before, representing ZRT Laboratories. We're going to be talking today about the stress hormone and its connection with heart disease. That's right. It isn't just about what you eat or whether or not you drink or smoke. What about the stress in your life? We're going to be talking about that today. And I'd like to welcome to the program our guest, Dr. Sanjay Kapoor. Thank you for joining us on the program today, Dr. Kapoor. Thank you, Daniel. Now, let's talk about heart disease and diabetes, things like that. Is this all just related specifically to our dietary habits, or is there more to it than this? There are several things, uh, Daniel. It's just not diet. Uh, it's all about we. Uh, it's all about lifestyle. Let's put it that way. Uh, how active we are, what kind of exercise we do, what kind of diet we consume, uh, everything put together. It's all about the uh, about the work we do, all the stress. So many things put together. Now, let's talk about the connection between stress and heart disease. What exactly is the link there? Good question. Uh, well, uh, as uh, we know that uh, we are all stressed out. Everybody is stressed out. If somebody says, I'm not stressed, they're lying. And uh, actually, stress, it, it's so normal and very natural to have stress. And, uh, but the problem is that uh, most of us, we, we just leave it unmanaged, and that is not actually a good thing. Uh, so any type of stress, it can lead to all kinds of problems like emotional or psychological and even physical problems like uh, heart disease, as we are talking about uh, during this next 30 minutes or so, high blood pressure, so on and so forth. Well, it's not very, very clear at this time in terms of the biochemical pathways that how uh, stress increases the risk for heart disease. I mean, we do not know uh, if, if stress directly affects or causes heart disease, <clears throat> or is it that the stress uh, causes some other risk factors that may further are responsible for causing heart disease? I mean, it's possible that stress makes some other factors like high cholesterol mm -hmm. or high blood pressure worse, and those things indirectly increase the risk of heart disease. Say, for example, if you're stressed, you may tend to eat more. Uh, some people, they just skip meals. Uh, your blood pressure may increase. Uh, you may exercise less. I mean, you don't feel like working out when you're stressed out. Or, or, or you may be more likely to smoke uh, and do all kinds of things which are not good for the body. So that's how uh, basically, directly or indirectly, th this is how stress has been shown to be connected with heart disease. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, does it seem that uh, this day and age that heart disease is more prevalent than it was, say, 50 years ago or more? Uh, I'm glad you asked that. <coughs> Like if we look at the statistics uh, as of today, almost one million Americans die every year of uh, cardiovascular disease. And uh, by calculation, that comes down to one death every 34 seconds. Can you wow. imagine that? I mean, oh, yeah. <laughs> so just imagine, like while we are talking for the next 30 minutes or so, uh, almost 60 people in this country will die of heart disease. I mean, that's kind of sad. And look at diabetes. 24 million people in this country have diabetes, and out of those, only 18 million are diagnosed cases, and, but rest 6 million people, I mean, almost 6 million people, they don't even know that they, they are diabetic. And both these conditions, uh, they cost us almost, uh, well, actually even more than $620 billion in uh, direct and indirect health care costs. And, the, and, this is, and this number is actually increasing uh, uh, by, by days. And the projections uh, in the next uh, 20 to 30 years is that there will be another 72% increase in the incidence of uh, heart disease and diabetes in this country alone. Now, how can somebody have diabetes and not know about it? Because uh, there are no symptoms of insulin resistance. Actually, what happens is that uh, diabetes is actually the end result of uh, all that uh, 
10 to 15 years of uh, uh, symptoms, not really symptoms, but uh, the, when the system goes bad, they, if there's something called insulin resistance that develops because of all kinds of uh, our lifestyle, diet and exercise, lack of exercise and so on and so forth, or hormone imbalance. So we do all kinds of things and we, without even realizing that there are some changes going on in our bodies, which uh, in scientific terms we call insulin resistance. And this process actually starts way before uh, we start to see symptoms of diabetes. And when, it is, when, we, when we start to see the symptoms, then it is kind of probably very late. That's and it. That's that's it. it. Go, yeah, go ahead. Well, I was going to say, you know, it's just so interesting when you relate stress and heart disease and you realize that we see more of an increase of heart disease now more than we did 50 years ago. And you take a look at the fact, uh, for instance, I was just uh, reading the other day, about the advertising messages out there that they're everywhere now it seems everywhere you turn somebody's got something they're trying to sell you or pitch to you or tell you yeah. and it's like you can't get away from it unless you lock yourself in a closet and you wonder if that has a real subtle effect on your thoughts and that's, then it creates the chain reaction of stress and then you know it just kind of continues from there that, that's kind of true uh, like I, I'm glad you mentioned uh, that uh, the incidence is increasing uh, from when we compare from uh, the time of, of our grandparents or great grandparents, I mean those people they were they were more active. Uh, let's put it simply, they were very active. Their lifestyle was different, uh, even though they had to survive uh, difficult environments. But uh, at that time, the energy from food what they consumed was sometimes limited, but yet the energy requirements of daily life were rather high. Right, uh, mm-hmm. and, and look at us today. I mean, our lifestyle is much more comfortable, and we have access, easy access to all <clears> these <throat> comforts of life. But uh, what is happening as a result is that the that we spend less energy. The energy expenditure has been substantially reduced. And and as you mentioned, look at the food we consume today. Uh, uh, this fast food culture with poor nutritional value, and uh, so for these obvious reasons. And all these people, all these uh, marketing messages trying to sell us uh, uh, all the fancy foods and all those fancy things that actually are taking us uh, to a direction where we are going to see a very significant uh, increase in the incidence of all these conditions. And I don't know what we are actually running after. I think the, all these things put together collectively are the major reason that we are so stressed out today. We don't have time for anything. We don't have time for ourselves. And that's kind of sad. I know. Isn't that fascinating that you can ask people or tell people one of the best ways to relieve stress is to begin meditation? How much do I need to do? Well, five minutes a day just to get started. Oh, I don't have five minutes on my day, and you're like, <laughs> yeah, you actually do. <laughs> yeah, we, I mean, we, we, we have to kind of make time for ourselves. We will never find time, so we, mm-hmm. we really need to make time. That's what I tell everybody. Mm-hmm. Now, cortisol seems to have a, a connection here um, with stress and heart disease. Let's talk about that. Cortisol... Uh, Cortisol is a stress hormone. That's what we, uh, in simple terms, we call cortisol as a stress hormone, which is, uh, which is a hormone produced by our adrenal glands, which sit on top of the kidneys. And uh, actually, this cortisol does a lot of good things, like help in glucose metabolism. It controls our blood pressure. It, it also helps in boosting the immune process and uh, it's also very helpful in uh, inflammatory response. And uh, this cortisol hormone, it's, it's present uh, usually in high levels in the morning when we, when we wake up. It's at the highest level. And as the day goes by, the levels go down and are lowest at night. So when we are stressed out, what happens is that stress actually causes the cortisol levels to go up. And this is the reason that cortisol is also called as the stress hormone, as I just said. So small increases, any changes in cortisol levels is actually good for the body. 
Why I say that? Because it provides a quick burst of energy for a, for a response to stress, and it helps in increased memory, improved immunity, and cortisol also helps maintain overall balance in the body. So cortisol basically helps the body to respond to any kind of stress uh, situation. But uh, under normal situations, after the stressor is gone, the body needs to relax, mm -hmm. right? I mean, we all want to <clears throat> relax after the stress is, done, is, is over. But what happens is, uh, in our uh, today's lifestyle, uh, the stressor is never going away. If one stressor goes away, we have the other thing to worry about. So what happens is when the stress is too high and stays for a long time, our body's relaxation response is not activated. And because of that, the cortisol levels stay high at all times. Just because we are stressed at all times, the cortisol level stays high at all times. And this actually causes uh, the chronic stress. And when cortisol levels remain high in blood for a long time, it affects our thyroid, it affects our uh, cognitive abilities, uh, the blood sugar goes high, blood pressure goes up, immunity is lowered, and uh, all kinds of inflammation uh, uh, increases in the body. So all these things put together, it, in, it leads to a condition where we start uh, putting fat inside our belly and oh. control abdominal obesity. And abdominal obesity has been directly connected with heart disease. Why? Because it, uh, when, when you see a big belly, definitely there's something going on uh, with the cholesterol there. The bad cholesterol goes up, the good cholesterol goes down, and, uh, and the inflammation goes up. So all these things uh, put together uh, put, a, put the individual at high risk of uh, getting heart disease. Mm -hmm. Now, is there a difference? Because <clears throat> I remember some time ago I was talking with uh, someone who was Greek, and they said that, you know, like in Europe and in Greece, that men tend to be hearty, you know, well-fed, so it was actually more of a, a good thing versus uh, what you're talking about, which was abdominal obesity. Is there a difference? Well, uh, it, it's funny. When, uh, uh, when I was growing back in India, uh, I was born and raised in India. And when I was growing up there as a child, uh, I had this impression, people used to say that uh, somebody who has a big belly is uh, is a sign of rich men, and mm -hmm. I, and I grew up always uh, uh, thinking that wow, I, I would be so happy if I had a big belly. But now, <laughs> now I know what this big belly means. Quite different, that's for sure. Now let's talk about things. I mean, you mentioned uh, with the uh, I guess the things that contribute to heart disease, and as you even mentioned earlier, uh, diabetes. Uh, which was lifestyle, eating habits, stress, and et cetera. Let's talk about some of the things that people can do uh, to basically change this. I mean, we tend to always hear eat right, exercise, and get plenty of rest, but is there more to it? Is it really just that simple? Several things, uh, Daniel, that uh, I usually, whenever I talk about this, I always recommend uh, people to, in addition to eating well-balanced meals, and exercising. Well, actually, uh, just these two things, if, we can, if somebody can change their lifestyle to have a moderate amount of exercise, just 30 minutes every day for uh, mm -hmm. five days a week, that is enough. Just brisk walking is enough. And balanced meals is good, uh, fruits, vegetables. Everybody knows how important it is to consume uh, a variety of foods. And always eat variety of foods. Eat colorful foods. Eat in moderation uh, and keep healthy weight and maintain it. Mm -hmm. we, we all know, but we like to hear it from others, and then we, uh, we follow those directions better. So always let your friends, let your family uh, know about uh, these things. And uh, it is very important sleep. Sleep is the most important thing. Always try to go to bed at the same time every day. Uh, and that's possible when you don't take naps during the day. I mean, so much, many of us, we love to take naps, but, um, well, I wish I had the luxury of doing that. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and they say, don't watch the television in, the, in your bedroom. Mm -hmm. Avoid caffeine, 
uh, especially before going to bed. Although I personally, <laughs> uh, I, I I can't sleep unless I get a, a cup of tea before going to bed. But no, mm-hmm. don't don't do what I do. Uh, always <laughs> avoid caffeine uh, when you uh, go to bed, and uh, do not work out uh, but within two to three hours before you go to bedtime. Before your bedtime. And uh, talk to someone. Talk to uh, to your friends or or family if you're stressed out, uh, especially before going to bed. If you're stressed out, please talk to somebody and uh, try to relax. And there are so many uh, breathing techniques uh, people can uh, uh, practice. Uh, relax, just sit quietly, and it's kind of a learner skill. It takes some time, uh, commitment, and practice, but it's about giving rest to both mind and body. And this can be done by kind of a deep breathing uh, techniques. Feel the breathing process while slowly breathing in and then exhaling slowly. And so while doing so, loosen your body parts, uh, especially uh, those before you, uh, uh, those where you feel more tense. Mm-hmm. Uh, kind of rotate your head in a circular motion, uh, roll your shoulders forward and backward. Uh, th- think of something nice. Uh, think of something nice and soothing that makes you feel better. So keep some positive thoughts in mind. Uh, s- some people love to relax better to music, so listen to some music. Mm-hmm. Do some yoga. So there are so many can- things that one can do. I mean, keep high self-esteem. Just just think positive. Believe in yourself and what you do. Just be yourself. Mm-hmm. And so, I mean, it, there are so many things one can do to relax and be stressful, uh, st- stress-free. I know many times on our program <clears throat> we've actually had where we've recommended gardening. <laughs> you know, oh, there's yeah. a great oh, yeah. way. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And, and, and above all these things, uh, our hormones, like we were talking about cortisol, Hormones, keep, keep your hormones in balance. All these hormones are so important in our body that we always need to have a good balance of all these hormones inside the body. I and mean, I always say that hormones, our body is like in like kind of an orchestra, and all these hormones are all those musical instruments, which if one of them is not playing right, I mean, you don't get that symphony. You don't, uh, you don't hear that orchestra. It doesn't sound pleasant to you, right? So mm-hmm. hormones in our body are exactly the same way. Uh, one hormone goes out of balance, uh, it, whether it's in excess or there's deficiency of hormone, uh, that uh, ultimately affects our body and overall wellness. Now, it's interesting because you talk about uh, how our mind is activated in thoughts and, and how it just can kind of run amok, if you will. It seems, too, that as we talked earlier about meditation, that would be a great way to get the mind to just basically become still because that triggers a lot of stress. Oh, yes, absolutely. I mean, there, there have been so many different studies uh, on meditation. Uh, scientifically, they call it transcendental meditation, which has been, uh, which has been shown to actually reverse the uh, effects of atherosclerosis or disease. And uh, some studies have shown that uh, this kind of meditation results in overall reduction of myocardial ischemia. And uh, different insurance companies have seen uh, a lot of reduction, like reduced health insurance claims for cardiovascular disease. And overall, uh, reduced mortality rates have been shown uh, to result from uh, these meditation studies. Oh, yes. Outstanding. Now, ZRT Laboratory is a place that does hormone testing, and it sounds to me like all sorts of testing where people can just actually send in samples from their home. Uh, this day and age, with the technology as advanced as it is, is it possible to reverse heart disease and diabetes if you can be tested and find out and then take the next step? Absolutely, absolutely, <laughs> Daniel. Uh, I always recommend that this is kind of a, it's not, it's never too late. To take, to take control of your overall health and wellness. And these conditions have shown to be reversed by uh, so many things that we just talked, uh, well, we talked in very brief, uh, but all these things, if we make such lifestyle changes and keep our hormones in balance by uh, testing our hormones, 
uh, let's say, uh, annually at least, even if we don't see any symptoms, there might be a few hidden changes going on within our physiological systems, which later on might result in conditions like diabetes and heart disease. So it, this is really very important to test our hormones uh, at least annually. Yeah. And if we see any condition, conditional changes within our body, if we think that we are too much stressed out, then we should uh, test our hormones more frequently to uh, to kind of actually be in the driver's seat. That's how I put it. Just mm -hmm. be in the driver's seat and take charge of your own health and wellness. And uh, this, for this reason, uh, ZRT has uh, developed uh, several uh, hormone tests, very simple, easy to do at home. And actually, the ZRT has hormone testing in saliva and the blood spot uh, tests that are very convenient to use. And this, go ahead. Yeah, no, I was just going to say that this blood spot kit is uh, it, it's a very simple thing uh, to that anybody can use. Uh, what it is uh, that this kit contains very easy step-by-step -step instructions, uh, skin cleansing wipes, lancets, a special card on which the blood drops can be collected. And then once dried within 20 to 30 minutes, this sample can be actually shipped mailed back to uh, ZRT, and then uh, it, it can be analyzed, and the hormones can be tested. And this uh, requires no special okay. handling. And once you have collected your sample, as I said, it's just returned to the lab for analysis in a prepaid envelope. And the good part is that the convenience of collection at home allows for uh, early morning testing, and also if you have to test several times during the day, so you don't have to basically drive across town to get your blood drawn from your vein. I mean, I hate to get my veiny puncture because my veins are deep-seated, and my phlebotomist has to go in uh, to find out my vein three or four times, and that's a pain. I, I just <laughs> hate that. So this blood spot is nearly painless. Finger prick, a simple test, very reliable and accurate. And uh, once the analysis is done, a, a detailed, comprehensive test report and evaluation is generated, which is kind of made available online or mailed or faxed to your provider within five, within five to seven business days. And and the, another good part is that uh, you can also discuss your test results with a ZRT physician on staff. Just call in toll free. Uh, the number is 503-466-2445. And you can also visit the website at www.zrtlab.com, zrtlab.com. Uh, there's tons of information out there uh, to help you, yeah. Very encouraging. So a person can actually get themselves tested and then go to their doctor and say, okay, this is what I got uh, going on here. What can I do about it? Absolutely. <laughs> so this is why I say just be in the driver's seat and, mm -hmm. and, and be proactive. Take charge mm -hmm. of your health and wellness. Mm -hmm. And don't buy into too much misinformation, which we know there's a lot of that going on out there. <laughs> right. Mm -hmm. Absolutely correct. Well, Dr. Sanjay Kapoor, thank you for joining us here on the program today. If you go ahead and give out your website again. Well, the website is www.zrtlab.com, and the phone number to call in is 503-466-2445. And uh, if anybody has questions for me directly, they can reach my email. It's skapoor, S-K-A-P-U-R, at zrtlab.com. And I'll be more than happy to answer any questions that anybody might have. Dr. Sanjay Kapoor, thank you for joining us here on the Beyond 50 radio program. Well, thank you, Daniel, for having me today. And good day to you. You bet. So there it is, folks. Don't get too stressed out if you don't need to. And if you are, then you might get yourself in a lot of trouble, especially when it comes to heart disease, and we certainly don't want that. Get yourself tested and do the right thing to keep yourself healthy, as Dr. Sanjay Kapoor says. Be in the driver's seat of your health. We also encourage you to jump in the driver's seat and visit us at our website at beyond50radio.com and sign up for our free weekly e-newsletter as well. Also visit us at our blog where we archive our shows like today. That way you can have good information for you to use and also share with others. 
We thank you again for joining us. This is the Beyond 50 Radio Program. I'm Daniel Davis, and remember, live your day past halfway.